Well, you could expect it as early as today. Those checks start rolling into bank accounts today. And well, many say they're grateful. They don't think this is really going to go very far. It's a lot to handle, especially for people out here that are 25, under 30, getting paid minimum wage, living in a city that's really expensive. Evictions are picking up across the U.S. Millions of people face the risk of slipping into poverty. A new group of lawmakers urging that Congress establish new programs just to provide essential relief to the people in need. Many people qualify for a bonus check soon. And now, folks, let's not forget about what President Biden wants for the fourth stimulus check. He says he can make it happen, so let's believe that he can make it happen. In just the first week of January, the eviction lab at Princeton University has crowned more than 9,300 eviction filings in nine states and 32 cities that it monitors. In New York City alone, nearly 4,400 families and tenants have been removed from their apartments since January. This eviction problem is getting worse. And now, it makes everybody realize that stimulus should be sent out. If it's not, more people will be evicted, more people head into the streets, and more people are going to be in tough situations. It's not what President Biden should do. It's not what President Biden should let happen. He has the power to stop this, so stop it, Joe Biden. First of all, a research specialist at the eviction lab told CNN, we've seen in recent months an increase in eviction filings in the areas we lack and track, sometimes track backwards, pre-crisis averages, and sometimes worse. Eviction can be a traumatic, disruptive experience, destructive experience for families that face it. And people know that's true. People have experienced this and it's not good. People need to know that it must stop. First of all, if you're behind on your rent or mortgage replacement, here's what housing experts recommend you do. A payment is here for you. Certain states, for example, landlords are limited in how much they can raise for your rent. If you're facing eviction because of an increase that was legal, it's worth knowing. You may be able to bring this up in the housing court, up with your landlord. In some places, you're entitled to a set amount of notice with an eviction, such as at least 90 days in specific areas of Maine. During the school year, educators and families with school-aged children recently got the new eviction protections in Oakland. And meanwhile, if your landlord has raised your rent above a certain amount, you could be eligible for a new payment as well. Especially if you live in the states of Oregon, you can get your moving costs covered. Most rental assistance program, and uh, they open up during the crisis are now closed, but some people are still accepting applications at least. The National In Low Income Housing Coalition website says you can find a state-by-state -state guide of relief options and statuses available. Now today, the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said that the U.S. has never been and never will default in debt. He statement as the country hits the $34 trillion debt ceiling and began what the government called extraordinary measures to continue paying bills. But House Republicans under the leadership of Kim McCarthy have threatened to hold the president's hostage over the debt limit, now demanding spending cuts or targeting programs like Social Security and Medicare. McConnell added that Republicans will negotiate with Biden over raising the debt limit, even though the White House has signaled that no conditions to be attached to this. They just don't listen, folks. Instead, the Treasury Department announced it is taking extraordinary measures to ensure the U.S. continues to meet its financial obligations. And it's true, they're doing stuff that makes it happen. Officials measure that these exhausted summer debts will increase. McConnell said he expects both sides to come to an agreement somehow, someday, and somewhere in the first half of 2023. But the director of the National Economic Council has said that ceiling is not something to play around with. It's not a game. It's not a toy. And so it only makes people realize that stimulus should be sent. Stimulus should go. Stimulus should be approved. Now, first of all, Adis told CNN that even when just the spec of the United States might not honor its obligations, well, don't be worried about that. I'm not about to be concerned about a financial crisis because it hasn't happened yet. But let's face the facts. If it hasn't happened yet, it's bound to happen soon. So, Joe Biden has to do something about this. Fourth stimulus. A fourth one and a fifth one, possibly. A ton of news about the fourth stimulus check, Social Security Benefits, SSI, SSDI. We have a ton of news on this, a ton of news on the fourth stimulus payment. You have to know this, folks. A ton of news is here on the fourth stimulus check, a ton of news is here on SSDI, SSA, and Social Security Benefits. That there must be no brinksmanship and no default on the debt ceiling. Speaker, Speaker McCarthy, what about you? The House GOP is threatening spending cuts. Well, what are they? Why the evasion? Why is your conference hiding from the American people? House Republicans, where are your cards? Again, I want to be clear that the debt ceiling is a subject of the highest consequence, and using it as a bargaining chip, using it as brinksmanship, 
as hostage taking as Republicans are trying to do is exceedingly dangerous. Because if the House of Representatives continues on their current course and allows the United States to default on its debt obligations, every single American is going to pay a terrible and expensive price. The consequences of default are not some theoretical abstraction. If default happens, Americans will see the consequences in their daily lives. Interest rates will go soaring on everything, from credit cards and student loans to cars, mortgages, and more. That thousands of dollars for each American going right out the door will happen, and through no fault of their own. Retirement plans like 401ks would lose their value, robbing people of their hard-earned livelihoods. For millions of Americans who one day dream of owning a home, their own piece of the rock, a default would, be, would add $130,000 to the lifetime cost of a new home loan. Imagine spending years of putting a little bit of your paycheck aside every month in order to buy a house, only to find out that suddenly that dream is entirely out of reach because radical politicians in Washington bumbled their way into a financial catastrophe. That's precisely the danger we approach, thanks to the House's GOP's reckless approach to the debt ceiling. None of this need be inevitable or even likely. If only House Republicans quit their radical posturing and work with Democrats in a serious way to raise the debt ceiling together. And we should do it soon, not months from now when America finds itself staring straight into the abyss of financial catastrophe. And I'd oh. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf today with a pitch to give some Pennsylvania residents a little extra cash at a time when they're paying extra for essentials. People need help right now, and we can, do, we can afford to do this as a commonwealth right now. Wolf and Democrats are making another run at a plan to send households making up to $80,000. Governor Gretchen Wimmer has pushed hard for this increase, and Republican leaders in the state have floated the same idea. The package includes a $500 rebate for individuals with an income of less than $125,000 and joint followers making less than $250,000 as well. Another one of the bills would repeal the retirement tax in the state. Earlier this year, Governor Whitmer said repealing, repealing the state retirement tax ban, repealing the retirement plan would save 500,000 Michigan households on average of $1,000 per year. Senate Republican Shelley Moore Capito has introduced separate legislation to overhaul the permitting process for energy projects, as Democrats debate a similar proposal agreed on by Chuck Schumer and Manchin. Capito said the ranking member of the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee presented a bill as necessary to give industry regulatory certainty. She also said the proposal would expedite the completion of the Mountain Valley Pipeline, a project set to run through West Virginia. Manchin has made the competition of the pipeline a major priority, and the summary of the side deal reads with Schumer includes removing several obstacles to the goal. Senator Capito said in a statement, since our calls for action and offers to see legislative text from the of the deal remain unheeded, Republicans are introducing this bill today to deliver solutions to roadblocks, delays, and postponements of key infrastructure projects across the country. House 